So today we're going to talk about um, finding slope from an equation. I'm pretty sure you can do the whole top half of this sheet on your own. However, I just want to remind you what it means to find solutions to an equation. So if you take a look at these problems here, we have these three equations and I have tables next to them. If I were to ask you to give me some solutions to these equations, I would want you to make a table or just give me ordered pairs of the solutions. So if I'm gonna grab, keep in mind, I'm gonna graph this equation. So before I graph it though, I wanna come up with some ordered pairs that are gonna fit on this graph. Now, when you pick values for x for all of these, I want you to make sure that you have at least one positive, at least one negative, and throw in zero, okay? This very first one, I want you to pay attention to what you are putting in for x, right? If I'm gonna graph these when I'm done, it's really nice to have integers as my solutions. So if you think about it, what are some things I could put in for x here? Since I'm gonna be multiplying x by negative two thirds, think about what could I pick for x that I could then cross cancel. So some good ones would be numbers that are divisible by three. But if you think about it, you might be like, well, nine or 21, but if you think about that, those aren't gonna fit on the little graph that I gave you. So let's think smaller. So I definitely wanna pick zero, So, and I definitely want to pick a negative number. So I'm thinking pick negative three, pick zero, pick three. Those three are definitely gonna fit on that graph. If you want it to pick one or two or something and get a fraction and estimate where that is along your line, you can, but it's okay with me if only three of your points fit on the line. So I'm gonna say go ahead and pick six. For the rest of these, I don't care what numbers you pick for x as long as they fit on the graph and it doesn't matter if they're divisible by anything because if you look here, I'm just multiplying x by two and here I'm just subtracting x from something. So it doesn't really matter what you pick for x. So I want you to stop the video and I want you to go ahead and fill out these charts, come up with some solutions, graph them, and then answer the questions down at the bottom. Okay, so when you are checking to see if you did this correctly, look at your lines first, right? So does your line go in the same place as my line? Also make sure you put arrows at the ends of your lines. The ordered pairs, since we picked these numbers together, these ordered pairs should match. Over here, I just picked negative one, zero, one, and two, and this is what I calculated to get them. You could have other ordered pairs in here. I graphed more, ordered pairs than I actually have in my table. Here I chose negative two, zero, two, and four, but you don't have to, right? If you look, your line really should be going here. They should, my line, because my slope is negative one, my line really should be hitting the corners there, but I just want every other two. Um, it doesn't matter. As long as your line looks like this, you did well. So. You should have gotten here that the slope is negative two thirds. You could have gotten the slope by calculating it, the rise over the run, or you could have just calculated it by subtracting a y's and an x for any of them. Here you should have gotten two and negative one for the other ones. The y-intercept, quick reminder, your y-intercept is the place where the line hits the y-axis. So it's right there, so that's the order pair zero, one. You also might have it in your table up here. It's also the value where x is equal to zero. So here, my y-intercept is zero, negative three. It's right there in the table. Here, I got zero, two. It's right here in the table. So now, these last two questions, these last two questions are the most important part of this. So I'm asking, where do you see the slope in the equation? So if you don't see it, well look, here's the equation. The slope was negative two thirds. Where is it in the equation? Here, the slope was two. Where is it in the equation? The slope was negative one in this last one. Well, where is it? You don't see it, but like think about where it would be, right? That would be negative one. So it should be the number in front of x, which remember is the coefficient of x. And then if we take a look at the y-intercept in the equation, well, if you look, the y-intercept here was zero, one. If you just wrote one here, that's fine. But look, where is it? It's right there in the equation. Here, it was negative three. It's right there in the equation. Here, it's two. It's right there in the equation. And so what is that number called? That number is called the constant. So the y-intercept is the constant. 
So that's really important information. Whenever you have an equation in y equals form, we actually call this slope-intercept form. And the slope is always the coefficient of x, and the y-intercept is always your constant. But that it only works if the equation is y equals form. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some horizontal and vertical lines. Feel free to stop the video here, and you should be able to come up with the slope and the y-intercept and come up with four solutions to the graph, right? Remember, solutions are just ordered pairs on the line. So I've already given you the line. Come up with four solutions on each line. The part you might need my help with is the equation, but I encourage you to go ahead and take a guess. So fill this out to the best of your ability and then tune back in and make sure that you've got it all correct. Okay, so hopefully you didn't think I was trying to trick you with the vertical line. Um, but let's look at the horizontal line first. So if you look at this horizontal line, the slope is zero and the y-intercept is zero too. If you just put two here, that's totally fine. When you're listing your solutions, I put points where you, there are a bunch of solutions right here. These are all ordered pairs. The most important thing I want you to look at is what actually happens is that all of your y values for this problem end up being two. Now the equation, the equation for this line is y equals two. Now, if you think about it, I could put it in slope intercept form, right? Like just what we talked about, we said that the slope goes in front of x. So we could say, well, that's zero x, and the y-intercept is our constant, which is two. Now, the reason it just becomes y equals two is because in simplest form, zero times x is zero. So that just goes away, and zero plus two is just two. So your equation would end up being y equals two. But the other really cool part about it is if you have a table right there, it's y equals two. The other thing I would note is when you're looking at the line, well, the y-intercept is two, right? every single value on that line is gonna hit the y-axis at two. So we don't even need x because this line is actually gonna hit x everywhere. So the equation is gonna be y equals two. Now the next one, the next one, the slope is undefined and there is no y-intercept, there's only an x-intercept. So if you accidentally said that the y-intercept was negative three, that's wrong. It would be there is no, because the y-axis is right here, and this line is never gonna hit the y-axis. So this equation cannot be written in slope-intercept form because you don't have a slope and you don't have a y-intercept. But it's very similar to the horizontal line where y was equal to the same number. If you look over here, x is equal to the same number. So here, the equation for this line is gonna be x equals negative three. So that's the equation for this line. And a big clue is that it hits the x at negative three and also the x-intercept is negative three. So vertical lines are always gonna be in the form x equals, and the value that x is is always the x-intercept or the x-value of all the ordered pairs along that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in another one over to the left. Let's draw this horizontal line here. So that horizontal line there, what do you think the equation of that line is gonna be? Go ahead and draw it in. Think about it. If you think you know the equation, write it down. And then on the right-hand side, I'm gonna draw another one, another vertical line. Let's say I've got this vertical line here. What would be, I'm trying to make that actually go through an actual point, it's not a fraction. What would be the equation of that line? And if you think you know, you should write it down. So back to the horizontal line, that equation would be y equals negative three. Because the y-intercept is negative three, the slope is zero. And this one over here to the right, well that's gonna be x is equal to four. Because where does it hit the x-axis? It hits at one, two, three, four. It hits at x is equal to four. All right, now let's make some conclusions here. I have given you some clues about what a lot of the conclusions are. If you want to stop the video and try to fill out some of these without my help, that is a really good way of seeing if you've been paying attention to what we've been talking about. But I'm gonna do these with you. So, when an equation is in y equals form, like the three that we did, you could give me anything here. So you could say y equals I'm gonna just write negative two thirds x plus one because that was the first one. But if you could, you could say y equals x plus four, something like that. The next one I gave you was y equals two x minus three. 
and the last one I gave you was y equals 2 minus x. You don't have to have those as long as the equations you put there are y equals something with an x, and you don't even have to have plus or minus anything, but there has to be an x and a y, and it has to be y equals form. So we say that they are in slope-intercept form. That's what this is called, slope-intercept form. That's an n there. And the generic form is y equals mx plus b. So that's the generic form of the equation in slope-intercept form, where the constant, the constant is b, and that is the y-intercept. The coefficient of x, which we are calling m in this form, is the slope of the line. The slope of all horizontal lines is zero, and its equation is in the form y equals a number. And the number that it will always equal will always be the y-intercept, or you could just say the y-value of the ordered pairs. The slope of all vertical lines is undefined, and its equation is in the form x equals, the number that it equals will always be the x-intercept, or you could say the x-value of all the ordered pairs on the line. Now, go ahead and practice some of these. Be careful when I say what is the slope and what is the y-intercept, don't forget there might be one or two that has no slope or no y-intercept, so keep that in mind. So stop the video, see if you can figure out what the slope and the y-intercept is. When you write your y-intercepts, write them as ordered pairs. All right, in checking your answers to these, things to pay attention to, make sure you don't forget negative signs, right? The coefficient, if it has a minus sign in front of it, it's gonna, have, it's gonna be negative, same with your constant. Basically, in all of these, except for the ones that are horizontal line and vertical lines, the coefficient of x is your slope and the y-intercept is your constant. I do wanna point out for E, since you didn't have a constant, that means that the line starts at the origin. Now, if I were you, I would go ahead and highlight my horizontal line and my vertical line, because these are the ones that really do not follow the rule. So these two right here are ones that are kinda weird and that you should just pay close attention to. So now that you're familiar with slope-intercept form, horizontal and vertical line equations, we can also start writing equations from a table and from a graph. So if I'm giving you a table, let's take a look at these three problems. I'm asking you for three things. I'm asking for the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation. If you know the slope and you know the y-intercept, then you can write the equation, right? So quick reminder, when you're using, when you're trying to find the slope of a table, we're using the slope formula, right? So remember, the slope formula is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. You could also flip the x sub 1 and the x sub 2 as long as the top and the bottom are in the same order. Now, when you're given a table, how can you tell which ordered pair is the y-intercept? Well, think about the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the place where a line hits the y-axis, which is the place where the x value is always what? The x value is always zero, right? So it would be where x equals zero, okay? And so that would be, it would be in an ordered pair, zero, comma, whatever the y value is, right? So. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. So the first one, all I have to do to start off is pick two ordered pairs and find the slope, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick the last two ordered pairs here and find the slope of four, between four negative two and 12, zero. So if you wanna stop the video and find the slope between two other points, that's totally fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do negative two minus zero on the top, and then four minus 12 on the bottom. And so two minus zero gives me negative two, and four minus 12 gives me negative eight. And that in simplest form is positive one fourth. Remember a negative over a negative is always a positive. So the slope is positive 
one fourth. Now, my y intercept is the place where x is equal to zero, right? So that would be right there, the order pair zero, negative three. Let's change my color black to black. Zero, negative three. So my equation, keep in mind, I want my equation to be in the slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So that means I'm gonna replace the m and the b, because I know that, right? So my equation would be y equals 1 fourth x minus 3. And if you wanted to check to see if you were correct, you could take any of these ordered pairs, plug them in, and they would work, because they are solutions to the equation. Go ahead and stop the video and try number two on your own. Go ahead and try number three as well, but definitely tune back in to make sure that you've done it correctly. All right, so I got that my answer here was y equals 2x minus 8. If you got that, awesome. If you didn't, maybe look at my work. So I've highlighted here in gray what two order pairs I picked to find the slope. It doesn't matter which two you choose. I've highlighted in yellow my y-intercept because the value of x is 0, and that's my equation. You could take any of these ordered pairs, plug them in, and because they're solutions to the equations, they should work. Now, taking a look at number three. Number three, when I went to calculate my slope, my x values were the same. So that means I got zero in my denominator. When you get zero in your denominator, that's a big sign that my slope is undefined here, right? So here, I'm gonna say my slope is undefined. And because my slope is undefined, that means I'm not going to have a y-intercept. So there is not a y-intercept here. Just because I didn't have a y-intercept in my table, however, that does not always mean that your slope is undefined. Your table doesn't always have to have your y-intercept. And we'll talk about how to find a y-intercept later when it's not in your table. But this particular one, a big clue that I ha I'm not going to have a y-intercept is because if you look at all of my x values, what are all my x values? They're all the same, right? They're all going to be negative 12. So my y-intercept here doesn't exist, and my equation is going to be x equals negative 12. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some graphs. All of these graphs have a slope and a y-intercept. So go ahead, stop the video, find your slope, your y-intercept, and come up with your equation. Tune back in to make sure you've done it correctly. All right, so the equation for the first one should be y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3. The second one is y equals 2x plus 3. And the last one is a horizontal line, so it's going to be y is equal to negative 4. If you started this off with y equals 0x minus 4, that's fine, but you have to fully simplify it to make it y equals negative 4. All right, if any point during this video you got lost or confused, I want you to put a star by your question or write your question down somewhere so that when you come back to class, you can ask me. So that's it for today. Enjoy the rest of your day.